If you grew up on country music in the mid-90s like I did, there's no doubt that you know that heads means Carolina and tails means California. You know that being stuck in the middle means money gets tight, but that it'll be all right in the end. And you learn that there's a lesson in leaving for any foolhearted man. For me, it was on an old TV in the corner of our garage, permanently tuned to CMT, where videos were the only programming. That's where I saw Jody Messina belting these anthems, recording them deep in the soundtrack of my soul, returning to them countless times over the decades. I have a distinct memory from elementary school, on the swings, pumping my legs and torso with every ounce of energy I could muster, chanting the lyrics, it's a beautiful day, there's not a cloud in sight, and I'm alright. I don't remember what I felt or anything else about that day except for the comfort in those lyrics and the reassurance that things would be alright. And I've always carried that message, lyrics, and so much more of Jody Messina's spirit with me as a constant on my playlists and mottos in my life. Our relationship with music is actually quite scientific. Psychologists study what music means to our culture and emotions, and we know that there's a deep connection to the limbic system, which is the brain's complex system of nerves and networks. People tend to find connection in music through memories, with certain songs taking you to a particular time or place in your life. We feel a reminiscent connection to music to accompany the emotions it has already aroused. So as a longtime fan, it was really exciting earlier this year when I got to chat with Jody Messina as she dropped a new single. That's it right there. It's called Just To Be Loved, and it's a message for a complicated world. I got the chance to talk with her about that, and so this is it. I'm Jordan Frazier in conversation with Jody Messina. I'm close. Are you? So backstory, I am a longtime fan of yours. Uh, your music is a staple on my playlist always. Uh, so it's really a pleasure to talk to you. Being a fan of your music for so long, you know, I was I was I walked my dog and I was thinking, like, how would I kind of categorize your music? And I came up with, you know, it always seems to have some sort of drive, a little bit of defiance mixed with a little bit of a dream. Oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> That's right? cool. Oh, yes. I never thought of it. And so, but when I was listening, when I was listening to your new song, it seems to hit all of those themes, but it sort of like takes something, it takes something back a little bit, right? It's like. I think in this song, <laughs> this has to do with my relationship with Christ. Um, I went a whole career without having that relationship in place. And so I, I pastor. John Piper said, um, and a lot of people know who John Piper is, if we knew how much God loved us, we would all carry ourselves differently. And so I was heartbroken by, you know, some some social media posts or, you know, text messages that I had seen come across, you know, my kids' phones. And that's kind of what generated the whole idea for this song. I'm like, why do people feel like they have to change who God made them in order to be accepted? And that's not true. So I think with this song, it's more having that or knowing that truth um, of who we are and who God made us and how he loves us, um, which is the underlying tone of that song. <laughs> uh, um, in the song, you, you, you talk about a girl who, who is that girl? Any girl. Um, we imagined, you know, the three-year-old spinning around face dirty and covered with, you know, marshmallow and, you know, s'mores or whatever, and her toes all grungy with dirt and a little belly sticking out because she's got a little belly and she didn't care. 
she didn't care. She was ready to like conquer anything. And then she opens the door to um, all these different social platforms where she compares herself to this person or that person or their life or their hobby or their job or their. So it's almost like keeping up with the Joneses, what they used to say, but now it's like massive. And we, I can't even keep up with that. Never mind, you know, it's just your everyday 11 year old person, whether it's a girl or boy, you know, it's, it's hard to keep up. Comparison steals joy. So, and that's what a lot of people do is they compare their life to the ones online they or they see online. I think that's so true. And I, I said I would make my pitch to you that I, I want you to record a version that says a uh, guy instead of girl, because I think it applies to to everyone uh, as well. Um, oh, wow. I think that'd be so fun. Um, we never thought of that. I think when we had gone in in the writing session, the reason why we chose a girl was because one of the writers had a daughter. Hmm who's knew someone who was kind of overtaken by that pressure and ended up um, taking her own life. So that's why we leaned towards the girl. Um, and so anyways, yeah. but it would work either way. Yeah, I think so too. I, I think it'd be so, uh, it'd be so powerful. Um, the line in the song that strikes me every time I listen to it is uh, when you say, then it got complicated. And I think that is such a powerful yeah. line because it applies to so many aspects of life. And I'm curious, uh, what have you learned over the course of your career and your life that when things get complicated, what do you do to like recenter yourself for self-care to kind of to get your head back in the game? I spend time with the Lord. I, I just did that this morning. There's so many things coming my way touring wise and award show wise. And we're, you know, my kids are starting school, school starting back and um, I have songwriting appointments and we have a new single and we have a single coming out on Ben Fuller. And we, there's so many things where I get like caught up almost, I'm going to say caught in the game that I have to pull back and go, okay, Lord, you're here with me. I'm okay without all of it. Yeah. And I think, you know what I mean? And so we keep thinking that to reach a certain point, then we're okay. But I've reached that point. And then you have to keep reaching and reaching and reaching. And where does it stop? It doesn't really stop. You know, Um, some of the most successful people are the most lonely, um, successful in the world's eyes, you know, like, and I, and I love him so much. Michael Jackson was so successful, but yet spent so much time alone and had just an aching in his heart. Um, And so I have to pull myself back out of the the game. I'll just call it the game for right now Um, and recenter on who am I in Christ? Who am I? Who did God make me to be? And so I wrote a letter to to God the other morning. It was a couple of weeks ago where the same thing, I started thinking about all the moving parts going on. And I was like, I can't, every day without you is an off day. I I have to start my day with him in order to like get grounded and centered and find out what really, what really matters. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. That's me. That's that's how I do it. I don't know. No, I think you're right. I think I'm not doing it great. Anyways, I'm not doing it perfectly. We all try our best. Uh, I, but I think it, there's something to it about like the moderation of when when you talked about, you know, climbing and the next thing and the next thing. I was so related to that because for so long in life, you know, the next rung of the ladder is clear. And then you reach a point in life where it's not so clear and you really have to sort of reflect and kind of center yourself. Um, and so I really relate to what you're saying there. I'm curious, you know, when you look at the catalog of your songs, right, is there one of your songs that you think kind of defines you best as an artist? No, <laughs> no, because I think as individuals, we're we're, com- we're complicated, we're complex. And so each of those songs is who I who I was at that time or who I wanted to be. Um, you know, all the strength in some of those songs like Bye Bye and Lesson and Leaving. I mean, I was getting walked over <laughs> at that point. And so I thought that's the strength I wish I had. Kind of like the people listen to it like, oh, man, I wish I had that strength. Um, me too. Uh, so I think that to pick one, it's just, it's not possible. I mean, I'm, I'm one of those people who listens to those songs. I'm like, hell yeah. Like they're, they're my power anthems too. Right. Um, 
you said you yes know, right, right right so <laughs> So you're a mom and you talked about this a little bit about like seeing the stuff on your kid's screen, but you're not just a mom. You are a mom that is very much in the public eye. You've got a lot of pressure and attention on yourself. Um, so the social media world impacts you as well as your kids. How do you manage the screen and that in that that outside pressure of the social media, both kind of for your kids and for yourself? And how do you emulate kind of how they should handle it? I don't spend a lot of time on the screen um, as far because I because I am a mom and I really ground myself in my my kids and their schooling. And I mean, I homeschooled my oldest one until last year. He's starting he's starting school this year. Um, anyways, so I was very present in the now, in the here and the now. And I try to do that. Um as opposed to everything else. I look at, you know, sometimes I'll go and scroll through things and I look at it like a story as opposed to this has to be my reality in the sense, not not my own things, but I look at the other people's posts or whatever here and there. Not a lot because I'm constantly, I'm not sitting. I'm not sitting still and I don't have that time to kill. But when I do, I kind of look at it more like a story. <laughs> <laughs> that's, I, that's interesting. I've never heard someone say that before. I like that a lot. Um, when we talk about loneliness, I think, you know, loneliness can teach us a lot, right? Because it, it, it creates this introspection moment. Um, have there been moments in your life where you have felt especially lonely? And, and what did those moments teach you? A lot of those moments happened... Um, Again, we're going to go back to this, but and before I knew Christ, because now those moments where I'm alone in the morning or alone, I have those moments I spend with him. So I'm never a really alone, but I didn't know that until I knew him. And so and he's not just a book and he's not just a practice. I mean, you're he's a, he can complete your soul or your spirit so that he fills that void of lonely. Um, the internet can't fill the void of lonely. It can entertain you, but then once you turn it off, you're still lonely. And so with Christ, I can, you know, I remember all those times of lonely and I remember, I don't talk about this often, but I remember times where, um, I was going through certain scans and certain things for, uh, the, my cancer. And I'm like, okay, Lord, it's me and you. Like you, there's no one else in this machine with me. There's no one else in this process with me. There's no one else rolling down the hall with me. There's no one else. You know, there are a lot of alone moments where just the, and you can tell his presence or I could tell his presence by just that empty of loneliness, the peace, the fullness, almost joy in the middle of chaos. I know that sounds crazy. It's crazy. Unless you've experienced it. And then you're like, Oh, I want to get back there. I want to get back there. So now all my lonely times are with him and they're not so lonely. Uh, <laughs> no, you almost made me tear up a little bit because when you talked about, uh, so I, three years ago, I had two brain surgeries, two weeks back, uh, two weeks apart. Uh, so I have big scars down each side of my head. Uh, so when you talk about being wheeled down the hallway, it was at the beginning of COVID and my family couldn't come in. I was completely by myself. And I, you know, I, so I feel that it can be lonely and that and terrifying. And I think that if you add Christ into it, you might be alone, but it isn't the terrifying um, lost feeling that we have in those moments. Yeah. And you get it. Uh, maybe like people, it. Like uh, maybe other people don't understand, but you know, that moment where you're just rolled off by yourself um, yeah. and you're, where they leave you on, on the gurney waiting for surgery. And you're like, I'm in this hallway all by myself. Oh yeah, you dig deep there. Uh, uh, I want to. I want to talk about something maybe a little uh, happier. Uh, and I want to talk about heads. Uh, heads, Carolina tells California, one of my favorite songs. And obviously, it's had this resurgence now with Cole Swindell kind of name checking it and the amazing performance you guys did at uh, at the award show. Um, how does that song hit differently now for you than it did uh, back in the nineties? Mine's always been. 
it's always had that freedom feel to it. You know, that's the drive behind that song musically is that freedom and um, just that freeing feeling. So it's still, it's always had that for me and still to this day, you know, and people sing it and that's the, that's the drive behind it. Yeah. So one of the things that I love so much about your songs, and I think, uh, you know, a lot is unique to you and your songwriting and the songs that you perform are people can sing along to them. Is that an intentional choice for you? Do you is that is what's that connection like for you that people can can sing with you? Well, you would think, you know, you keep songs simple and people can sing, but that's not the case. Uh, you see eight year olds singing every word to like lesson and leaving, you know, the chorus changes. The verses are very wordy. Same thing with I'm all right. Well, it's been a long time. Got to see your face. I knew we'd meet again another time. Another I can't believe it's been so many. I mean, there's a lot of words in there. Oh, yeah. So it isn't simple. I mean, the chorus is, but they're singing, you know, you've got kids out there that <laughs> weren't around when the song was out and they're singing every word. So um, I don't really know. I just gravitate towards songs that I can relate to. And yeah. I'm just like everybody else. So <laughs> maybe Love that's it. why they like it. I don't know. Keep doing it because I sing to every word to I'm all right as well. Um, how did uh, you how did you learn about Col- what Cole Swindell was doing that he was going to name check your song? How did that how did that come to you? I got a, a text message from one of the writers of the original Heads Carolina Tales California. And he said, hey, just wanted to give you a heads up. And he sent me the, the recording of the song. And I was like, oh, my gosh, it wasn't supposed to be a single from what I remember. Now, I could be wrong, but I don't think it was supposed to be a single when that album shipped. And then once they decided for it to be a single, um, Cole and Warner Brothers reached out and asked about like doing a remix and doing the being a part of the video and the CMAs and the SEMs and all that stuff. So that's kind of how that rolled out. And were, were, did you have any hesitation or were you like, heck yeah, let's do this? Yeah, I was more like, oh yeah, this is gonna be fun. Yeah, so fun. <laughs> I love it. Uh, yeah. uh, how have you evolved as a as a songwriter uh, over the years to where you are today and writing and writing this new song? I think just that a lot of doors have opened for me to write with people, um, write with some phenomenal writers. And so I'm grateful for that, you know, being able to, it's a whole different aspect of my career. You know, I'd write a song here and there, but I was so busy touring and recording and, and, you know, interviews and just that life that I didn't have the time to sit and be still and write. And so now I have more of that, more of that time and opportunity. What, what is that writing space for you? Is that, what does that do for your soul? I mean, a lot of it's processing. A lot of it's, uh, for me, it's processing what's going on in, in life, you know? <laughs> it's, it helps. It's very, um, it's very therapeutic, I guess, to get in there and write certain things or even the joyful stuff. You know, you're like, oh my gosh, you know, I had a song like, thank you for today, you know? It right. just gives you a chance to get it out and process through it. I love it. Um, so we've got this new we've got this new single out. I know you're you're on tour. Your tour is going to end in California, which I love. Uh, what's next for Jody Messina? Well, the tour might continue on. <laughs> We're getting so many um, requests for shows. We might have a part two next year, but that's not that's not for sure yet. Um, usually, I'd take a break for the holidays and hockey season. My kids play hockey, so. That's where I spend the winter is at the rink. <laughs> and so um, so we we may have news for you there. <laughs> we'll let you know. Book a date in D.C. I'll be there. <laughs> OK. It'll be so fun. Well, thank you for chatting with me. Yeah. Uh, I love the new song. Big fan of yours. Uh, it's a pleasure to speak with you. Well, thank you. Thanks for your time. Thanks. Have a good day. All right. Bye. My thanks to Jody Messina for taking some time to chat with me and for all the times I found comfort, courage, and some hope in her timeless hits. My favorite line in her latest track, Just To Be Loved, is when she sings this. Then it got complicated. Isn't that right? It always seems to get complicated. 
In my own journey, I've learned that there's great power in labeling facts, giving our minds and emotions something concrete to hold on to. It's a type of foundation formed by acknowledgement that makes reality less scary or even less uncertain. And the truth is that sometimes life does get complicated and we don't always know what to do when that happens. So I love this idea of just providing a deference, giving a moment it's due in that space that could be either too little, too much, or sometimes just too close. Taking a breath when it gets complicated and remembering it'll be all right. You can stream Jody Messina's latest single, Just To Be Loved, on all of the major platforms right now. Also, check out her tour dates at jodimessina.com. And as always, do as I do. Add some of those classics to your playlist for a little boost. Until next time, stay close and be well.